a very good morning to all welcome to another session on remote sensing and gis i hope you all are able to see the presentation yes sir in last week's class we had seen the ultramagnetic wave radiation interaction with atmosphere in today's session we will be dealing with the ultramagnetic wave radiation interaction with the earth materials when the ultramagnetic wave radiation falls on the surface of the earth how it reacts with the those materials and how it reflects or refracts or transmits so that we are going to see in this session so the energy or the ultramagnetic wave radiation that interacts with the earth surface has this following features so the first feature is the reflection principle second one absorption third one transmission and the fourth one emission so always radiation is not at all observed or scattered in the atmosphere and it can reach and interact with the earth's surface so when ultramagnetic wave energy reaches the earth's surface it gets reflected or absorbed or transmitted or emitted so that is what we are going to say in this second half of your unit number 2 all the ultramagnetic wave energy that reaches the earth surface should follow this three either reflection absorption or transmission so the portion of each will depend upon this four properties so the first is the spectral reflex reflectance property of the surface materials the surface smoothness wavelength and the angle of illumination so all these proportions in an appropriate combination gives rise to reflection absorption or transmission of the ultramagnetic wave energy ultramagnetic wave energy when it reaches the earth surface so first let us see the radiance of ultramagnetic wave energy so the radiance of ultramagnetic wave energy is dependent upon on the black body radiation this black body radiation is a hypothetical material that absorbs and irradiates all the incident ultramagnetic wave radiations for this the constant of uh, stefan boltzmann equation is being used which we had seen in unit 1 that describes the total amount of radiation emitted by a black body is a function of its surface temperature which is m is equal to sigma t power 4 where m is the energy that is being uh, radiated sigma is the stefan boltzmann constant as we had seen and t is the temperature measured at kelvins so this is the me measure of radiance of an ultramagnetic wave radiated signal so this is how the energy interactions with earth surface is being obtained so the ultramagnetic wave energy which is incident from the sources is written as ei with respect to lambda so ei is the incident energy at a particular wavelength so when it falls on the earth surface for example here we have the earth surface so this side trees are there here we have an uh, shallow region here water might be present or uh, pits might be present trees and again it goes on so when the incident energy falls on the surface of the earth material some tends to reflect back so which is denoted as 
ER reflected energy with that particular wavelength lambda. Then some would be transmitted into the water or into the hollow pits. So which is written as ET of lambda, transmitted energy. So some would be absorbed within the water. So that is given as EA of lambda. So at a particular wavelength, absorbed energy. So this you can see with a small example of leaves. So leaf is present. When electromagnetic wave energy incident is incident on an, any given earth surface future, these three fundamental energy interactions are possible. One is absorption, as you can see, and light falls or electromagnetic wave energy falls on the surface of the future in the form of I incident. It gets absorbed, which is written as A. That leaf can will absorb some part of energy, so which is absorption. So some will transmit through it. So through the leaves, something will be transmitted. So which is transmission. Something will be reflected back. Again, so which is reflection R. So this proportions will depend upon the wavelength of the energy, angle at which the radiation in intersects with the surface, and the roughness of the material and condition of the future. So here I have given an example of a leaf. So like this, all the materials on the surface will interact with electromagnetic wave radiation. And how it absorbs, transmits and reflects, depending upon that, it could be used for visualization or remote sensing. So reflection. Light ray is redirected as it strikes a non-transparent surface. So this is a non-transparent. If the surface is a non-transparent, it will reflect back. The light which falls will reflect. So which is given by the albedo spectral reflectance, measured as R with that particular wavelength. So which is defined as the average amount of incident radiation reflected by an object at some wavelength interval. The average amount of incident radiation reflected by an object at some wavelength interval is called as your spectral reflectance. So the spectral reflectance R of a particular wavelength lambda is given as ER of lambda divided by EI of lambda into 100. So where ER of lambda is the reflected radiant energy which reflects from the surface and the EI of lambda is the incident radiant energy which is falling on the object. So that ratio is your spectral reflectance definition. Then as we had seen in the last class, reflection is of two different types. One is specular reflection, another one diffuse reflection. Depending upon the smoothness and roughness of the surface, we are classifying it into specular and diffuse. You can see specular or mirror reflection occurs when the surface is very much smoother. You can see a road is present which is very smooth, smooth in nature in most of the parts. So it will be like a mirror which will reflect. Okay. So when the surface is smooth, we get specular reflection. So where the energy is directed away from the surface in a single direction. You can see that in the diagram, the road is present, the incident is in dark black color which falls on the smooth surface and it is reflected in another single direction. You can see that. So this is specular reflection due to smoothness. Next is another condition is your diffuse. 
so this diffuse reflection occurs when the surface from where uh, the surface of the surface materials which is present on the earth is rough you can see there is an example of a christmas tree when uh, the electromagnetic wave radiation falls on that tree and the surfaces are very rough then the energy is reflected almost uniformly in all the directions you can see the dark the dark is your the dark is your incident the small small or the lightish uh, lines line with uh, small is your reflected incident is your dark which falls on the tree surface or on the leaves which are rough in nature so when it falls it scatters or it reflects in most of all the directions okay so which forms a lambertian reflection or a lambertian pattern or we call this as diffuse reflection so this is just an example of your diffuse reflection so when a particular target reflects specularly or diffusely or somewhere in between that depends only on the surface roughness of the future of what material it reflects back so depending upon that we can find what future is present there or what remote sensing can be done if the wavelengths are much smaller than the surface variations or the particle sizes that make up the surface diffuse reflection will dominate for example a fine grained sand would appear fairly smoother to long wavelength microwaves if you use a longer wavelength microwaves the fine grained sand would appear smoother but whereas it would appear quite rough to the visible wavelengths so depending upon the wavelength also the diffusion to specularity will vary depending upon the roughness so now let us see the specular versus the diffuse reflectors the specular reflectors are flat surfaces that manifest mirror like reflections yeah the specular versus the diffuse reflectors specular reflectors are flat surfaces that manifest mirror like reflections the angle of reflection will equal the angle of incidence the diffuse or lambertian reflectors are rough surfaces that reflect uniformly in all directions if the surface is rough the reflected rays may go in many directions depending upon the orientation of the smaller reflecting surfaces diffuse contains spectral information on the color of the reflecting surface whereas specular reflections do not do so in remote sensing we are often interested in measuring only the diffuse reflectance of objects so which will give us the exact presence of what type of object is present in the earth without touching it in real estate you can see that the surface is rough reflected rays go in many directions 
if the surface is smooth it will go only in one direction just like a mirror so you can see a specular versus diffuse reflectance how it acts there are four where where there are four you can see one is your perfect specular reflector where the angle of incidence is equal to angle of excitance occurs when it is falling on a smooth water okay and uh, when it falls near a perfect specular reflector not exactly perfect nearby to a perfect specular reflector there at the smooth surfaces it will have unidirectional reflection whereas at uh, rough surfaces it will have a diffuse reflection you can see angle of incidence angle of excitance you can see it is larger so here it is smaller and in a near perfect diffuse reflector you can see that the incident wave falls here and the reflection at the smooth places will go like this and in rough places it will go like this okay it is a near perfect so when it is a perfect diffuse reflector or a lambertian surface the incident wave which falls on the surface will diffuse like this so this is the major difference between the specular versus the diffuse reflectance so depending upon this reflection principle we can identify what type of object is present okay so the percent reflection of earth surface features you can see how much percentage of reflection they may give you can see if there is a fresh snow on the earth surface fresh snow fresh snow means the snow that has been fallen just uh, for about uh, 10 to 15 days will reflect 80 to 95 percentage if this old snow about the period of uh, 15 days hello yes there is someone Diraj Reddy Yes sir Any doubts Diraj Reddy? No sir Okay thank you Yeah. To proceed further, the percentage reflection of Earth's surface futures. A fresh snow, if it is present on the surface of the Earth, it will give 80 to 95 percentage of reflection. So, for about 10 to 15 days. And uh, if it is old snow, the thing is that the fall of snow from the atmosphere, which takes about uh, greater than 20 days it will reflect 50 to 60 percentage of reflection will occur then if there are thick clouds being present reflection will be 70 to 80 percentage of reflection of the electromagnetic wave energy emr if there are thin clouds so during day times or during sunny seasons or during high sun 20 to 30 percentage of electromagnetic energy is reflected and uh, when the reflection of water when the sun is near horizon we get 50 to 80 percentage of reflection when the sun is near zenith period so 3 to 5 percentage of reflection will occur if there is a material of asphalt 5 to 10 percentage of reflection will occur if the soil of the earth is lighter so 25 to 45 percentage will be reflected back if it is dark soil 
5 to 15 percentage are being reflected back. If it is a dry soil, 20 to 25 percentage will be reflected back. If it is wet soil, 15 to 25 percentage will be reflected back. If the forest or the trees are deciduous forests, 15 to 20 percentage will be reflected back. If the same forest is coniferous forest, 10 to 15 percentage will be reflected back. If vegetation or crops are being done, depending upon the crops, 10 to 25 percentage will be reflected back. And the other earth systems will have 35 percentage of reflection. So any query is still this, you can type in chat box. All these materials and uh, percentage reflections are being already done. So depending upon that, the values are given. So with that, with respect to that, we will be determining whether it is whether it is a uh, light soil or heavy soil, wet soil, vegetation crops, what is being done.
yeah most of you are unfamiliar about the asphalt asphalt is a concrete uh, that is uh, a composite material commonly used for making road surfaces parking lots airports or any encampment uh, dams okay so these are being used in as uh, mixtures in concrete construction so that is your asphalt so no, asphalt is a mixture it's not a company name mixture i have shown you in this slide okay, you can see that after the water asphalt so the remaining all you all are familiar what is a fresh fresh snow old snow clouds soils forests crops and earth system so the unfamiliar term is your asphalt so asphalt is a material which is used to make uh, uh, surface roads in parking lots airports or in any uh, construction purposes of dams so that is asphalt so the ultramagnetic wave radiation falls on it and it has a reflection future of about 5 to 10 percentage on it so any other queries you can type in chat box
little class. So since there are no queries, we'll go further move on to the transmission. So transmission is that the electromagnetic wave radiation that passes through a substance without significant attenuation. So this can be calculated by transmittance T is equal to transmitted radiation divided by incident radiation. It's simple. Ratio between the transmitted waves divided by the transmitted waves as you have studied in your electromagnetic fields. Next is your absorption. So absorption is reflection plus transmission plus absorption will be 100 percentage. Okay, with respect to your incident. Next is the emission. You can see. will emit some radiation. Despite the incident waves which are falling from the illuminated sources from the sun or from a passive sources or the active sources that falls on the earth surface. So this will emit in return. So which are coming under emitted thermal radiations. All this will emit some radiations. So that we called as emission due to the surface of the body or the body of the object. So it will emit something. So you can see a sun which is present, which is a source of radiation which falls on different objects in the earth's surface. You have buildings, you have huts, you have roads, you have empty or bare soils, you have water, you have grass, you have forest, you have vegetation and so on. So all this when it falls on the atmosphere will emit something. Okay, so that which is being absorbed by the satellite is used for remote sensing. So the information is in which angle, in which amount of power or in which ratio it is being detected by the satellite is done by a reflected solar radiation. So depending upon the values, the satellite will get data such that there is a building here. Here is a hut, here is a road, here is a forest, here is a tree, here is water, here is grass, here are humans, here are this much amount of radiation is present. Depending upon that, the satellite will get the data acquisition on the earth surface. You can see the spectral reflectance curve. So already we have defined the reflectance, spectral reflectance. Let us see this spectral reflectance curve. So incident, you can see in the diagram one, you can see here, all the waves that have been falling on the object is incident time. So it is reflected back, it is given as reflected from the surface RS. So the ratio between the RS and I gives your reflectance. So the energy is measured as a function of wavelength and is called spectral reflectance curve. 
so this spectral reflect uh, reflectance curve ranges from 0 to 1 or 0 to 100 percentage which can be measured easily by a spectrometer you can see the spectral reflectance curves for vegetation soil and water so the blue color indicates water the black color indicates your vegetation the brown color indicates your soil so at different wavelengths it's being measured from 0 0.5 micrometers to 2.5 micrometers you can wavelength and the reflection from 0 to 100 percentage in the visible region one to three bands you can see that the water is mostly I have reflected scow from the ranges of 0 0.1 to 0 0.8 micrometer if you want we need to use this wavelength for measuring water if you want to measure the vegetation it is usage that uh, near infrared region can be used where the maximum reflection is present so approximately 52 uh, 45 or 46 percent of reflection is obtained so which is wavelength varying from uh, 0 0.8 micrometers to 1.3 micrometers in this range if you want to if you use you can use it better for vegetation monitoring for water monitoring 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 okay 0 0.7 can be used for water monitoring and if you want to find it for soil so soil we need to go near the infrared region where there is approximately 50 percentage of reflection so you can choose from 1.7 micrometers to 2.1 micrometers wavelength for determining the soil so this will help us in designing an appropriate system to monitor different parts or different objects which is present on the soil spectral reflectance curve depending upon the reflection so next is the identification of surface materials based on the spectral reflectance okay so we are drawing the graph of wavelength from uh, 0 to 2.5 micrometers and reflectance from uh, 0 to 1 or from 0 percentage to 100 percentage you can see if there is if i want to measure green vegetation you can see the dashed lines you can see green vegetation can be measured at a wavelength using uh, uh, 1 uh, 0 0.7 to 0. Uh, 0 0.7 to 1.2 or 1.3 green vegetation can be measured at there if you use in that wavelength and if the values are above 0 0.6 or 0 0.5 you can see that there is greener vegetation means the area is fully covered of green leaves or greeny structures or the vegetation is very much good in that place and in the same wavelength right from 0 0.6 to 1.2 micrometer if we find only values of 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 maximum then it shows that there is a dry vegetation it shows that it is a summer season or it could show that there is less presence of trees and for soil if there is a uh, value that we are getting around uh, 0 0.22 0 0.23 in that wavelength we can say that it is the presence of soil Depend, uh, type of the soil can be determined later soil presence is there at around 0 0.22 0 0.23 0 0.24 so the choice of wavelength is a must depending upon the application being used so that design comes in, that design comes into play in this concern
Any queries till this? Chat box. I'll give you five or uh, okay, three or five minutes time. Then we'll proceed for the next slide. Okay, since there are no queries, I proceed on to the next slide. So the spectral reflectance of a good and healthy vegetation is dependent upon the color green. So how it is, is that in leaves, we have a chemical compound called chlorophyll, which will strongly absorb the uh, red and the blue wavelengths, but it will reflect the green wavelengths. So this internal structure of the healthy leaves will act as an excellent uh, diffuse reflectors for near infrared wavelengths. You can see that a leaf, a tree is there. All the ultramagnetic wave radiation falls on it. Ultramagnetic waves falls on it. The red and blue will is being absorbed by the 
leafy structures whereas green is reflected so depending upon this we can identify whether there is a good vegetation or there is a bad vegetation or a dry vegetation in that particular location so the absorption of the chlorophyll absorbing red and blue reflecting green is the spectral reflectance so you can see that the spectral reflected reflectance of a healthy vegetation depending upon the color that it reflects so chlorophyll absorption will be there in blue and red whereas reflection will be there in green okay so wavelength versus reflectance curve next is the spectral reflectance of bare soil means the soil whichever is present in the surface of the earth so how it reflects so we are taking wavelength in terms of nanometers in x axis 402 2400 nanometers so in how it acts when electromagnetic wave radiation falls on the surface of the earth what happens or how much minerals or how much constituents or moisture can be obtained with respect to your reflectance in percentage in y axis so you can see that a so a is the curve this is the curve so this curve is meant for organic dominance so when the electromagnetic wave radiation falls on the surface of the earth if there are organic matter being present on the surface of the earth then you will get this type of variations at different wavelengths and uh, if there is a minimum dominance of the soil content means that wetty areas or the presence of water along with that soil is more so then b is the curve you need to check it out b is the curve you can see and if iron contents are mostly present so then c is the curve for that c curve and if there is more organic affected area we can easily find so d is the curve so depending upon the values or reflections we can find the amount of moisture the amount of carbonates the amount of iron oxides or the colors of the bare soil so spectral reflectance curve plays a major role in remote sensing next we are going to see the spectral reflectance of water so water typically looks blue or bluish green due to the stronger reflectance at this shorter wavelengths okay you could you could you can never see that uh, dark colors at infrared regions okay so water water's reflectance curve is that you can see from the diagram or from the picture longer wavelength visible and near infrared radiation is absorbed more by water than shorter visible wavelengths okay water absorbs more the longer wavelengths than the shorter wavelengths so this is why it looks blue or bluish green in nature so depending upon that we can easily find what is present in that place so compared to the vegetation and soils water will have lower reflectance so where vegetation will reflect up to 50 percentage bare soils up to 30 to 40 percentage while water will reflect at most 10 percentage of the incoming radiation and beyond uh, the 1.2 micrometers all the energy will be absorbed you can see the typical effects of the chlorophyll and the sediments on water reflectance a is your ocean water so in water also we can classify whether it's a turbid water or water with chlorophyll means greeny structures in water 
for the fresh water and the turbid waters. So A will give this reflectance curve, B is this, C is this. So we can easily find out what type of water it is also in remote sensing. So this you can see a diagram. These are the rocky parts, you can see red and reddish brown, orange, all are rocky parts. You can see the greenish flow of water which represents fresh water. Vegetation water. By measuring the energy that is reflected or emitted by the targets on the earth surface or a variety of different variants, it is possible to build up a spectral response for that particular object. You can see water contents will having a blue curve and vegetation is having a orange curve. So depending upon the wavelength, it gives like this in different wavelengths. You can see that variation in different wavelengths, how it appears, blue, green, red and infrared regions. So by comparing the response patterns of different futures, we may be able to distinguish them easily. Here it is given only for vegetation and water. Now let us see the spectral reflectance of water, vegetation, soil as well as rock. The spectral reflectance of water, vegetation, soil, and rock. You can see one, two, three, four, five, and seven are the bands being separated. Here, visible light, near infrared, short wave, infrared are being the different spectra being used. So, wavelength varies from uh, 0 0.4 to 2.4 micrometers wavelength. You can see soil is your red, green is your healthy vegetation. Blue is your water, violet is your clear water, and black is your rocks, altered rocks, characteristics of mineralized zones. So those constitute them. So this blue is your water with your phytoplankton, which is your microorganisms. Water with microorganisms or green water or the fresh water that is being poured down prison. So this shows the spectra of vegetation. Chlorophyll will absorb blue and red reflects green. Vegetation will have a high reflection and transmission at near infrared wavelength region. You can see from the diagram. The same we had seen in a previous class, vegetation, sorry. Uh, in uh, electromagnetic wave radiation interactions with Earth's atmosphere. See. So next comes the absorption. Absorption is a dominant process in visible scattering. Scattering is dominant process in near infrared. Uh, water absorption always increases with increasing wavelength in infrared regions, you can see. The dominant factors controlling leaf structures are the leafy pigments in a palisade, mesophyll, chlorophyll, called carotene. So, so that determines the leafy structures. So this you can see the atmospheric transmission versus your wavelength. So different regions, visible region, Reflective infrared region, which is divided into near infrared region and middle infrared region. So the chlorophyll absorbs the bands, red and green, uh, red and blue, and it reflects green. So that is being highlighted here as chlorophyll absorption bands. So that shows the greeny structures, structure or nature of your vegetation. So atmospheric water absorption bands are present here at 1.4 micrometer wavelength and at uh, 1.9 micrometer wavelength 
and at uh, 2.6 micrometer wavelength. So that shows that the leaves are having more water content. Leaf water contents are more in this region. So next is the spectral signatures, the integration of the above factors that we have seen. Leafy pigments, cell structure, water content. Okay, which is divided into depending upon the wavelengths, visible, near infrared, and the shorter wave infrared. So the dominant factor for controlling leaf reference is your leafy pigments. Whereas this absorption bands, the primary absorption bands are your chlorophyll absorption and water absorption. So depending upon this absorption also, we can find the spectral cows for water content in the earth surface. So any queries till the water absorption, you can type in chat box. Since we are going to proceed for the next topic called spectra of soil, spectrum of soil we are going to determine. Yeah, the absorption is recorded separately depending upon the reflection of the ultramagnetic wave radiation. So if the value is thus, you can see here. You can see the values. Where green color will be a dominant. So if the value is around uh, 15 of the green color value on visible light, if it is present, it shows the absorption is here. Greeny water content. And, the, and if the value is around uh, say for example 30 30 or 31 when we use a wavelength of around 1.7 or 1.65 micrometer wavelength if the value of the reflectance is around 31 or 32 percentage water content is recorded it differs from material to material we need to see soil separately, water separately, as well as leafy separately. Then all together we need to consolidate. Then we need to give a report. So that is being done by the servers or the programmers that have been deployed for that particular application. So these are the reference values. So if this much amount of electromagnetic radiation reflection is obtained. So this is your water content or this is your soil content this is your asphalt or this if this much is coming this could be your greeny vegetation or a healthy vegetation or glaciers and so on
since there are no queries i proceed on to the next topic the spectral response of soil so first let us see what are the important properties of a soil in a remote sensing image so the first one is your soil texture which defines whether the amount of soil which is present comes under sand or a silt or a clay soil soil texture defines that then comes your soil moisture content how much amount of water moisture is present in the soil then how much amount of organic soil is present or the organic content is present in that particular soil next property is your mineral contents so how many how much amount of minerals like iron oxides or carbonates can be present in that soil that we are observing then comes the surface roughness whether the surface of the soil is rough or smooth or in between that that differentiates or that gives an important property of the soil so this five stands as a basic property of a soil which is being written by a remote sensing image so you can see a dry soil spectrum okay the coarse soil will have a relatively high reflectance you can see the reflectance is around uh, 90 90% of the electromagnetic radiation is reflected back okay so this reflectance is obtained in the visible region or the near infrared regions you can see the silt presence of silt of soil is around uh, it starts from 30 and it goes on till 90 at different wavelengths ranges from 0.5 micrometer to 2.5 micrometers so this box which is present in wavelength is a micro wavelength in micrometers so if there is a reflectance of about uh, nearly uh, at a maximum of uh, 25 or 26 or 27 28 if the reflectance is in that case at a wavelength of 1.5 micrometer to 2.1 micrometers then the presence of sand is observed so we can assume that or we can come to conclusion that sand is present in this area so the soil mo moisture will always decrease the reflectance because soil mo moisture if it is increased water content will be present so it will decrease the reflectance so the clay will hold more water tightly than the sand because when you pour water on the sand water in the sand the sand will uh, not absorb water it will dissipate the flow of water will run very easily inside the sand whereas in clays the clays will absorb water more efficiently than the sand so it will hold the water tightly so this makes that the presence of soil moisture higher with uh, decreasing reflectance meaning that clay will have more soil moisture so the clay spectra will display a prom more prominent water absorption bands than the sand spectra bands you can see two different soil moisture and textures for uh, sand material and clay material on the surface of the earth you can see the reflectance for soil moisture is around 0 to 4 percentage moisture content the dark the dark black color is around that so whereas for clay it is around 2 to 6 percentage at different wavelengths you can see the wavelengths Okay, and here from five to twelve percentage, sorry, five to 
12 percentage here is the reflectance so here it is 22 to 32 reflectance so depending upon the soil moisture and texture we can find whether it is a sand or clay then coming to the organic matter so organic matter is that how much amount of microorganisms can be present in the soil whether it is a portable or a non-portable that can be defined easily so if the reflectance curve is you can see that percentage of reflectance and here wavelength if the wave at 0 0.7 wavelength you can see that 0 0.7 micrometer wavelength if the value is very much lower we say that it is 100 percentage organic you can say for example it is uh, one if the reflectance is one it is 100 percentage organic if it is two or three in between two and three at 0 0.7 micrometer wavelength the soil is 70 percentage organic and 25 percentage sand so that is the presence and uh, if it is five it is around five at 0 0.7 wavelength 0 0.7 micrometer wavelength then it shows that 50 percentage organic 50 percentage sand is present and if it is above five in the sense seven or eight then this shows that 25 percentage of organic matter is present and 75 percentage of sand content is present and if it is above 10 percentage definitely we can say that only 100 percentage of sand is present which is 100 percentage inorganic so organic matter is a strong observer of electromagnetic radiation more organic matter leads to darker soils which will have lower reflectance curves so depending upon this reflectance percentages or curves we can easily determine whether this soil is useful for vegetation or not next is the determination of iron oxides so iron oxides will have a charge transfer absorption in the ultraviolet blue and green wavelengths in the near infrared region of 850 to 900 nanometer so the scattering principle can be used with the reflectance in order to find the iron oxides present in the earth surface so you can see that at wavelength 0 0.7 micrometers you can see if there is an increase in the red reflectance or if there is an red curve if it is around uh, uh, 18 or 19 then we can say that the soil is having iron oxides the soil is having iron oxides iron content is higher so and at the same 0 0.7 micrometer wavelength if the red reflectance is lower than 10 or it is near to 10 then it shows that the soil doesn't has iron oxides so the red color indication will indicate whether the iron oxide is present more or lesser so depending upon that you can easily find out at different spectral wavelengths so everything is depending depending upon the wavelength so more the red color more is the iron oxides okay at specified wavelengths next comes the surface roughness so the smooth surface will always appear as black so the rough surface will appear as bright so these are the two classifications of surfaces which will make either uh, diffusion or specular reflections so the smooth soil surfaces tends to be either a clay type or a silty type so it will have often a moisture content and may contain uh, strong observers such as organics and iron oxides will be very much higher in smooth soils whereas in rough soils or rough surfaces the scattering of electromagnetic wave radiation will be there and they will be appearing as bright so this is how the surface roughness are being classified.
we don't have specific curves for that. Then the spectra of uh, water, transmission at visible bands will have a stronger absorption at near infrared bands. The water surface, suspended material, and the bottom of water body can affect the spectral responses also, so which is to be considered. So any queries in this presentation, you can type the chat box. Any queries, you can put in chat box. With this, unit number two is over. Queries, you can type in chat box.